How's it going? This is your man, Terrence J, host of Radio Therapy. I am here hanging out in the Radio Therapy studios. I, I got two special guests today. Uh, there's a movie that's having a great big premiere coming up called Unfavorable Odds, and I have the EP and the main star of that movie right here with me right now. So I want everybody to welcome them to the Radio Therapy platform, man. Thank you guys so much. We got my man, Grayson. And then I'm going to tell you what. Now, you're looking at me because you know I'm going to jack up the name. But <laughs> I'm going to read it to make sure because I said it in my head a hundred times. So, <laughs> Dorjarian. The Jorian. See, there we go. So, so you like 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 the like the the, the jury on the in the courts. That's how I remember that. <laughs> Always listen. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I've never heard that. I, I've been I, I've I've been doing this man over a decade, and the one thing I have not mastered is names, and so <laughs> so I do my best. But man, thank you guys so much for coming out here, hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. So unfavorable eyes, man. I I need to from from the star of the movie. I, I got to get a, a premise of what what unfavorable eyes is. Sure. Well, Terrence, thanks for having us. First of all, they say the pride comes before the fall, and that's certainly the case with uh, with this movie and my character. I think all of us at one point or another have taken our significant other for granted, for, for better or for worse, and uh, Brad is just sort of out to lunch, the, the main character. And so he basically places a bet with his, you know, one of his best friends who's richer than he is, more successful than he is, and as we know, the grass is always greener on the other side for men sometimes, and so the bet is that uh, he can't seduce my wife. Mm. And that's basically the premise, and I won't, uh, I won't say too much other than Brad goes to, uh, to hell and back to, to, to get a wake-up call. Okay, listen, let me tell you, anytime <laughs> you start talking about seducing somebody's wife and uh, 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 playing those types of games, man, that can get dangerous. So um, while we have the EP, the executive producer, here in the building, we got to talk about that premise of that movie, man. So uh, ha having a concept where we're talking about, you know, Seducing somebody else's wife, and where did they come from? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, thanks again for having us on here. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it, it was it was a script that we found, that, that, written by one of the other EPs as well, um, and it, it was amazing. It, it was something that we just could not, we couldn't lose grasp of that. So we had to get it out there. It was one of these stories that people need to hear. This stuff really happens in real life, you know, so yeah. why not make a movie about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it does, man. And I think I think more than we, we realize, you know, it's one of those things that's behind closed doors, so exactly. uh, we don't we don't always get a chance to, to hear or, or see that, but I think some of these news stories we hear where it's uh, uh, crime of passion and it's just left at that, we kind of know exactly. maybe it might be something else behind that, man. So I want to get, get more into your background, Brad. Um, how did you get into acting? Well, my mom was an actress in the 60s, and so she was on – the Green Hornet with Bruce Lee and Ozzie and Harriet and all that stuff. Then, you know, made the mistake of marrying my dad, who was an attorney, and he got her to Texas. So <laughs> she probably would have been a bigger star had she not had me. But uh, so I was raised in the theater, community mm -hmm. theater in Houston. And it was always in the back of my mind. Uh, was a sports anchor coming out of college because, you know, your parents always want you to have a steady job. Mm -hmm. And then at about, you know, at about uh, my second year of my contract at Fox, I just said, you know, Terrence, you only live once. I want to try this thing, so I moved from Santa Barbara to Los Angeles, and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, it's it's you know it's a tough road, it's challenging, but that's the way I like it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so you know, I read about your your mom being in the theater and things like that, but but you know, you're kind of a free spirit yourself, man. And, and some of the situations you've been in, uh, I heard a story <laughs> about a Pink Floyd concert uh -oh. that I don't know if uh, Brad's gonna go into, but uh -oh. but you know, you have to be a person who's willing to be vulnerable. To be in that, the field of acting, so you were kind of natural. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think Paul Newman said uh, it's like metaphorically, it's like dropping your drawers. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. And, and uh, I did a show uh, two nights ago uh, called Big Sky on ABC, and it was one of those scenes where the, the director just said, "You know, I need you to break down," and I haven't done that in a while. Mm. So you know, you hadn't prepared that way, but you just got to go. And uh, it just reminded me after it was all said and done, like that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to be challenged. I'm doing it because it's not easy. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, and I think once um, you know, we look at usually cast of movies and we, we see how it's put together. But and I want to know um, what are you looking for when you start to approach an actor uh, like Brad, even to try out to say we're looking for a certain thing to be able to take this storyline for. What, what what are you looking for 
uh, going out on your casting calls? Well, um, the first thing is personality. Can they can they actually embody the the, the character mm -hmm. as we see it? Uh, that's that's extremely important because you want to be able to get the intention of the writer across, you know, what, what, for the movie. And so he did that so well. I mean, amazing, amazing. So yeah. And so so is it is it uh, after your personality? Um, is there is there like a a a one thing that you see that you say you know what? I gotta have this person, or is the personality the main dri dri driver of that that choice? <clears throat> the, when they're auditioning, the way that they're delivering the material, mm -hmm. that's that that has a lot to do with it, and that's that's gonna come, you know, out from their personality. I would say how how well they interpret what we what we intention, you know, in those sides, that has a lot to do with it, and as well how how, how are they are they personable when they come in? And he's mm -hmm. extremely personable. Yeah, everybody was. And so, are we are we able to get along? Because you don't want to work with somebody that you're going to be in con conflict with. On set, things can go to hell real quick. <laughs> so you know, yeah. we want to make sure that we have you know personalities that are going to be able to work together as well. Great, there's a great. lot of different dynamics in that space. You know, and and the thing is, is that you know, as the as the producer, or the executive producer uh, of of this movie, um, most of the time, especially when we're talking to kids and things like that, we're trying to let them know, like, listen, you can be in front of the camera, but you can also be behind the camera, right? And uh, and and the word was always, the money is behind the camera, but your background is in finance. <laughs> so 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 now, what in your schooling? told you that hey man i'm gonna get into the movies because you know you know that's a it can be a money pitch sometimes and then if you hit it right it, it goes well so so I don't, I don't think did this go along with some of your some of your teachings in your, your finance that's school? a very interesting <laughs> question <laughs> you know my background like you said is accounting mm -hmm. finance and also music um and i uh, interesting. I, this was something that I was not really expecting. Mm -hmm. I, so, when I was a kid, I would sit and watch stuff, you know. And something I always said in the back of my mind: this would I would end up in this space. Gotcha. But I never ever knew what that space would look, how that would come to be. Mm -hmm. And so, um, in my mind, it was just like, oh, okay, so one day maybe I'll be on TV or something like that. Yeah. I never wanted to be famous. That was never any kind of. I had zero interest in that. I was like, just give my check, and then I'm good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, you know the universe kind of says different sometimes yeah. and we have to yield to that so i was just kind of in the right place at the right time and had the backing you know financially to get this thing done mm -hmm. and so um it, they, they say it'll drop in your lap when you least expect it i was prepared when it dropped and that's how it came to be so that's the most honest answer i can give you yeah. <laughs> well you one. know and, and and a piggyback about you know wanting to be famous and i know you came up in a a family that had some, some, uh, some fame and, and notoriety. Is that something you search, search for? Or is that something that you happen to, to to fall into? Not at all. Yeah, and no, I'm with the Jorian on that. Actually, that's that's where the accounting entertainment mm -hmm. uh, meet for me. I'm, I'm not famous. Is not was never part of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's always been about the work. It's always been about, uh, you know doing something that you love and having that passion for what you love and you'll never work another day in your life it's it, it's true to an extent right so uh no it's it's always been about that and i have to say you know uh the uh, not it's not every day that you get to hang out with your ep yeah as an actor yeah those typically there's a line there you yeah. know and you stay in your lane and they stay in mm -hmm. your lane so it's just been so much fun getting to hang out with the jury and the jury actually picked me up at the airport believe it or not okay. we got to hang out we got to you know get to know each other a little bit i got to wear his uh, his expensive sunglasses <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know they made sunglasses that expensive yeah. <laughs> so uh it's been great and and, and from tony white to, to corey uh to boogie pinkney the director and uh, q and coda films which produced it uh Kershaw, Kershaw and uh uh, Marcus, our DP, man, it's just been such a, a blessing. And I also have to say, you know, with movies, uh, Terrence, and I'm sure you can speak to this about all projects, right? There's something divine that happens about each and every project, mm -hmm. right? And my mom was just ha had just happened to have a major, major surgery in Dallas, which was going to bring me back here, and then this film happened. So I was able to go back, do, a f do what I love mm -hmm. in the state that I love, which mm -hmm. is Texas, and be with my mom while, you know, while shooting this film. So it was such a blessing. Oh, man, and there was a couple of things came out of that which you guys just talked about, but I got to go with this first. Um, neither neither one of you started off seeking fame, you know, notoriety. You you were you were doing your thing, and was was happy with it. Is there a fear of 
of the fame because a lot of people are like, you know what? I, I love the an- anonymity. I, I love to be able to go to the store. I love, you know, is is there is there something in you that says, you know what? As much as I love this part, that part is is what what scares me. You get the nail on the head for me. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to get up and go to Neiman's and not be mm-hmm. bothered. You know. And at the same time, you know, it's nice to be served, too, when you go, because mm-hmm. I've had stores shut down totally for me to come in there and stop, if that's what I wanted to do with mm-hmm. the stylist or whatever the case may be. So it has its perks um, on one end and on mm-hmm. the other side, you know. If people think that when you have a lot of money that you don't have financial problems, sometimes you do, and they start with the IRS and things like that. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, that's that's another side of it. This is a double-edged sword, so you got to be smart about it. You need to, you know, make sure you have, uh, you know, something or somebody to help you navigate through those waters because it's um it can get treacherous out there okay we can still go to starbucks and hang out That's and right. have a coffee yeah. and then you know if you're if you're brad pitt and angelina jolie you got to have an exit strategy yeah you know yeah. you got to be careful that paparazzi following you out the yeah. door so I'm, I'm with you guys i think the anonymity is something that we for, we, we forget to appreciate and i guess that's i'm sort of you know hoping that it continues where i can just work continuously the mm-hmm. way i have been but still be in a place where i can do whatever and and, and, and come and go yeah you know um and and i think I, I fought that same thing man you know getting into this business it was like you look I, i'm just you know just know the logo and then all of a sudden you start recognizing people do need to know your face mm-hmm. and so i'm just saying you guys might want to start plenty of extra strategy uh, because, you know, once on favorable odds, you know, is in every major city and across the seas and, and you're on all these, you know, red carpets, people know your face. Uh, you might have to have them shut down Nemus because that's the only way you'll be able to shop because you have people you handing you scripts. Uh, <laughs> I need to be in your next movie. So, you know, and, and, and so you might want to get ready for that because, you know, it's, it's crazy to be in in certain rooms with people like Tyler Perry and people are literally trying to hand him scripts and he's like, I can't take that, right. you know, because yeah. if I do anything that looks like it, you're going to sue me. So I can't do it. So I'm just saying you might you might want to get ready, you know, for that. Your lips to God's ears. Too. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting because, like, when we t- when, I, when I took this project, I was adamant about, like, don't put my name on anything. Don't I don't want to be acting <laughs> like that, that I need to. You know, we take our anonymity mm-hmm. for granted. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, 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 I in another space that I was, you know, very successful in was network marketing. And I remember having people – follow me throughout the mall, you know, because they knew who I was. They were trying to get autographs. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind doing that, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, where you're like, yeah. I just saw you, like, yeah. three minutes ago yeah. in another store, and then you leaving in there in there with you again. Yeah. So uh, we, we take it for granted. And I, I just wanted to just like, hey, you know, but when I looked at the promotion part of the back end of this, mm-hmm. it's important to that people know who you are, who we are, you know, and the parts that we play to bring this this project together. Yeah, and, 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 and both of you guys just, you know, in meeting you today and, and you know, kind of hanging out before we started shooting, uh, you have that personality where you're people person. And uh, the jury and you was like, and I said, did I say it right that time? You did. The jury, <laughs> there we go. Better than me on my so, uh, <laughs> so the thing is, for you to say, I'm going to go, you know, and, and pick him up from the airport, something you said earlier about how sex you know, your, your set can just go to trash if the energy is not right. right. So would you, so I, I saw that as you saying, listen, I'm going to create this relationship with everybody we're going to be working with, and there's not going to be this tier structure. We're all in here to get a job done, and, and the better we can work together, you know, the best for the whole project. So is that kind of more so of how you take your approach as far as working with everybody that's on set and, you know, from the top to the bottom? Yes, um, I, there are no big eyes and little U's or anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, uh, like you said, we're all here to you know get something done, and everybody has an intricate part to play. Nobody's mm-hmm. any more important than anybody's. We can't get this done without you, and, and vice versa, so to speak. So you know, and that comes from my background in network marketing, um, just building those solid relationships, cultivating those. Even the first night we were here, we're, we did a big dinner at Morton's, the steakhouse, mm-hmm. and so uh, and that was just simply to get everybody on the same page mm-hmm. and to break the ice mm-hmm. because you you never know what how the flight was coming in or you know what situation somebody left at home you know left left mm-hmm. at home to come and what or what they had to 
to go through to get to you. So I, you know, want everybody to feel at home and to, you know, know that they are appreciated and valued. That's very, very important to me. I've seen so many times when we've taken each other for granted, um, even just in daily life, and then you don't have another opportunity to get that right sometimes mm -hmm. because, you know, they're not here anymore. Yeah, you know, um, and I don't know if you know this. See, it, it's when you when you do this this job, you get a lot of background information on people, and uh, sometimes they go all the way back to their early years. And so, um, you know, Grayson, as he's sitting here in this this form right here, you know, somewhere in his head, there's a five year old boy that still tells him he's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's extraordinary. I don't know about alien man, but 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 how did you? One of the great things, and I, I bring that up because. What you do right now, I know you're doing something you love. And so many times as a kid, we have these ideal, these dreams, and we get somewhere in adulthood, and then they vanish, or somebody took that away. For you to be doing something you love, knowing, going all the way back, your imagination as a child, saying, hey, I think I'm an alien, I think I'm, I'm, I'm you know, just not of this world. How do you... And, and, and I'm not being funny. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, re I'm, re I'm really, I'm, I'm really uh. interested in you saying, I'm going to go from doing the sports casting mm -hmm. to the the actor side because you only get one life to live. You yes. know, we are human. We don't, you know, some people think you reincarnate. You <laughs> might. I don't know. But so for you to continue to have that that childlike, adventurous spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've always had in life, or is it something you rediscovered? Well, I just got chills from your question, Terrence. That's a good question. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and by the way, it was you know my next door neighbor who I'm still friends with, my my, my oldest friend mm -hmm. in my life, uh, who who would who two years older than me, so he was using that age on me. Yeah. He said, Grayson, we can we come from the planet. <laughs> Those parents, they're not our real parents. <laughs> That's why we're so good at football and baseball and all this other stuff. Is the, the aliens are in control. So, yeah, it took me a little while to shake that off. But <laughs> Trey, it's all about you, buddy. Trey Gonzalez, ladies Shout out to Trey. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you reminded me of that. I mean, that playful spirit is everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. And we lose it so quickly. Because, you know, I say this all the time. There's only so many prodigies out there, right, mm -hmm. that were born. And like they knew they were going to be yes. that opera singer or that piano player. The rest of us you know, get told, hey, you're a good writer, but you're bad at math, or whatever that is. So we get siphoned into those little mm -hmm. lanes. And, uh, and yeah, I think we just do the best we can to pursue the dream. And I think for men, uh, you know, I know for myself, it was like, rock star was first. Yeah. Every red-blooded American male <laughs> wants to be, you know, the next Axl Rose yeah. or whatever it is. Okay, I can't do that. Athlete, I've always been good at baseball. No, nah, not big enough to be that. You know, the genetics just weren't there. So, actors sort of made sense, you know, on that level. And then, uh, and the great part, I think, the best part about acting is there is no ceiling. There mm -hmm. is no limit. I can do this until the day I pass mm -hmm. away. Yeah. And that's always going to be a role. So. Yeah. And I, and I, I think, I think uh, um, looking at just, you know, reading stories of your life and things like that and, and, and knowing uh, that you came from finance, uh, there's a structure to that. There's a structure to anything you do, even in acting, but there's there's a little bit more of a freedom when you come into saying that, hey, I'm going to produce movies and and uh, produce these projects in the in the arts, because arts gives us a little bit more leeway. For you and yourself, what do you like more? The structure of the finance or the freedom of creating your own project? Uh, he asked really hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> So um, right now, I could say um, I appreciate the structure of finance. Okay. And um, I found a love within that space. Mm -hmm. I'm learning to ride this bike right now, okay, gotcha. <laughs> if that gotcha. makes sense. Gotcha. So there are a lot of uh, things that seem insurmountable in the beginning um, because the you, we, we're looking at it, it's like right in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like how am I going to be able to – Get get over this. How are we gonna fix this, this this problem here? And that's what this comes down to. Um, and that I can relate that to every aspect mm -hmm. of my life when it comes to pro problem solving. Mm -hmm. So I'd say I appreciate the the um, the journey that this has put me on to be more creative and to pull stuff out of myself that I didn't even know I had because I had to, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to love the freedom once you know. Once I can, I can see past mm -hmm. some of the things that we're going through and, and, and putting out there. So yeah, yeah. 
I, I, I love it all. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it all. It's just something else I can add to say, you know what? I really enjoy doing that. And I've come close to retiring here in the last couple of years. Like, you know, I'm going to sell the company. I'm just going to chill out and I'm going to, I'm just going to, going to, going to glide for a little while. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, so this is evoked a fire in me that was like, I want more of that. It's kind of like when you try that thing and it does it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to get, get more of that. Yeah. That's yeah. where I am yeah. with yeah. this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, you know, coming, you know, just background uh, of your background and things like that. And I know sometimes people have a hard transition to go from a a structure that's already existing and I just mm -hmm. go and plug and play versus I'm going to do the creative side. And so that's why I wanted to know that because I know that's a hard transition. And it's hard for people on the flip side too. If they've been you know, free to create and then all of a sudden you put them in a, hey, this is how we do it, a lot of those people struggle. So to be able to transition from one to the other and appreciate that process is a great thing. And I think more people can learn from that to say we have to be open enough to be able to to go forward so um but but i want i want to make sure that everybody know that unfavorable odds is coming out and we're having this premiere uh right here in dallas and, and tell me why why you chose to uh make the premiere in dallas the movie was filmed here in dallas so what better place to do that in you know to have it other than mm -hmm. where the film where the film, film originated mm -hmm. right here and also, Dallas is a fantastic place to film. We have everything here that everybody, every, everywhere else has. Yes. And so it really didn't make sense to go anywhere else when everything originated right here. We're at the epicenter of this of this project. Mm -hmm. So um, it just was very natural. Okay. Okay. And I, every time I watch uh, projects, you know, filmed in other places, I'm like, you know, we have all of that, you know. And so I, I said, man, I don't know if I need to petition the – the, the, the mayor, the city, the governor, the state, listen, we need to be able to funnel a lot of that uh, uh, ability through whether it's tax breaks or whatever to bring a lot of the film industry here because, I mean, this is a great place to film. And so, um, and everybody calls Dallas the L.A. of the South anyway, at least, you know, how people like to act anyway. Mm, I, I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>